Glad you stopped by. I've been waiting for this vehicle a long time. And now I finally got it. Oh yeah. A large air scoop feeding 702 horsepower in a Ram truck. Who would have thought? But glad they did it. I was going to do a burnout in front of the mission here, but the tribal police get a bit upset over that. So I won't. Does make a good picture though. One of the biggest complaints you hear nowadays is the price of trucks and how they seem to keep going up and up and up. A perfect example is this Ram 1500 I had some months ago with the eco diesel engine and all the options from the factory. Here's a picture of it on the video we did. And here is the price tag. $75,305 for Ram 1500. It couldn't possibly go any higher, right? Well, think again. Here's the truck we're getting today. Lowballing us with the $69,995 price tag. But as always, there are options that raise us up right through the roof. I'll just scroll down for you. I won't read everything off. Uh, $7,920 for the Level 2 Equipment Group, you'll notice. Stuff we really don't need, but somehow won't anyway. If you're going all out. But wait, there's more. Four other items to be exact. Plus shipping. Which brings us to... $89,365 for a Ram 1500. Wow. Let's take a drive to the warehouse and see what we're getting for this money. It certainly won't be fuel economy, that's for sure. So let's go in the warehouse and take a peek at this thing. Well, this bright red paint certainly looks good. And certainly fitting to the vehicle for those who want attention. There are emblems on the outside, so onlookers will know you paid the big bucks for this expensive rig. Starting with a TRX decal on the side. Another 6.2 liter supercharged emblem on the hood. And here is the rear view. This is a very nice looking truck. As a rule, one of the advantages of having a Hellcat engine under the hood is showing it off to your buddies, but it's rather hard because of this giant plastic cover. This baby's cranking out just over 700 horsepower, but look at it, you have to get your head way down in here. And there's a lot of air being sucked in this vent. The TRX is a lot more than just jamming a powerful engine in a Ram 1500 series. In fact, the frame is only 25% carried over from the 1500 Ram series. Or is it 26%? Well, you get the idea, one-fourth. The other 75% or three-quarters is exclusive to this vehicle. Beefed up for strength. No, they did not borrow the frame from the 2500 series. That would have been too heavy. You get giant 35-inch tires designed specifically for this vehicle, I'm told. So you can imagine how much they're going to cost to replace. Hey, if you can afford the truck, you can afford the tires, right? A very fantastic Bill Steen, or Bill Stein, depending on how you want to pronounce it, TRX Active Terrain Dynamics shock control system. I've heard very good things about this. Looking forward to taking it out in the dirt. By the way, the rear differentials do lock, not so much for the front. For serious off-roading, here are your controls. Four-wheel drive automatic for the street, four-wheel drive for the dirt, and four-wheel drive low for serious dirt. And we have a mode button above there. Give settings for snow, tow, sport, Baja, rock, mud, sand, custom. You get the idea. We do get a spare tire underneath the bed. But this came with another one. And here's the sixth tire mounted on top of the bed. Great if you do a lot of off roading and get a lot of flats, but for hauling gear in the bed or the truck, like a truck is designed to do. You're going to be very limited with this. No room for a toolbox either. 
The TRX is about 8 inches wider than your conventional 1500. That gives lots of stability out in the dirt, but makes it rather difficult to take on narrow trails that we have around here. Simply put, this truck just isn't going to fit on places I do four-wheeling. We'll have to have a plan B. And as we do in all of my videos, we're going to take these headlights out and see how they perform in the dark. It's dark enough, let's see how these lights perform. I see we have some in the hood scoop too. I think it's something to do with federal height regulations or something like that. It doesn't matter, it looks cool anyway. Here are the low beams around a building 100 feet away. Very bright, good height. Of course, it's a high riding vehicle, should be. Go to high beam. Wow, excellent height. No complaints here. And here's what the camera system looks like in the dark. Very clear and sharp. Let's see what else this does. Pretty neat. You know, I'm building 300 feet away. High beams. Very bright. Good low beam. Maybe about 80% of the way. And you won't have any problems seeing this large infotainment screen in the dark. Just like a Christmas tree. Here we go, happy hour again. They don't drive safe like me. Let's see what's going on here. Our 8 o'clock news report, folks. Ooh. Oh. 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 Uh, motorcycle. Not good. Saturday night. Not good. That's why I sold all my motorcycles years ago. Like many Ram trucks, we get a large info screen. Here we have the performance mode, telling us that the best 0 to 60 time was 3.9 seconds and the best quarter mile was 12.3. That was before I got it. Neat. Then we have a performance program for transmission, paddle shifters, stability control, suspension, steering. I haven't quite figured out how this works yet. We'll get to it. Ah, here we go. We want the sport mode, don't we? And we have more cameras in the spy satellite. The surround camera, the forward camera, the backup camera. I think there's another mode in here somewhere. But you get the idea. I'm not going to cover this anymore because it would be an entire video. There's too much stuff to learn on here. And it makes me wonder how much this is going to cost if it ever breaks out of warranty. Well, we're not supposed to talk about that, but hey, makes you think. In case you're interested, this has actually been in our fleet for 1,060.1 miles, averaging 7.8 mpg. And that's exactly what I've been getting for the past 150 miles. We'll pause this video to give you a lesson in economics. Normally it takes me $4 to come down to the fast food joint and get a burger, but with this Hellcat Ram truck, it costs me $4 in gas to do so, which drives the cost of the burger to $8. So that's something to think about before you buy a Ram TRX with a Hellcat engine. If you think about it after you purchase it, then it's too late. Part one of this video, show and tell is over. Now we're going to take this out and do some driving before the tank runs dry. <laughs> Guess we'll have to fill the tank up again. It runs empty pretty quick, trust me. Oh, and by the way, if you want those quick 0 to 60 times, Ram has provided us with a launch control computer program. I've tried it several times and it does work. That'll be later on in the video. Let's try launch control, shall we? That 
that was fun. As a rule, the Ram is one of the smoothest riding trucks on the market. With these giant tires, you think that wouldn't be the case. Uh, no, actually, it's a pretty smooth rig. As we'll take these speed humps and find out. Around 15 to 20 miles per hour. This is in the automatic mode, intended for the street. Here comes bump number one. Didn't feel a thing. Number two. Felt nothing. Number three. Again, here's the nasty one. Just a mild jolt. Very, very comfortable. Even better than these stock rams from my standpoint. Here's a speed bump I never use. It's way too radical. I took it once on a heavy duty truck with the dually set up and just about knocked the fillings out of my teeth. Let's give it a go with this 20 miles per hour. A slight jolt, but pretty smooth. I like this power steering system too. Just heavy enough for my taste and pretty responsive. No complaints here. We're going to take this on a highway trip, so we might as well check the miles per gallon we get at 75 miles per hour, give or take. Like anyone really cares on a vehicle like this, but hey, that's what we're here for to get the facts. This TRX is a fantastic highway cruiser. You sit up high, we can see everything. The suspension is super smooth and comfortable. And surprisingly, the wind noise is extremely low, almost non-existent, although my cheap microphone on the camera might elevate what you're hearing a bit more than it really is. In fact, the only thing I'm really hearing is the rumbling of the exhaust. The droning does get kind of annoying after a while, but I guess you can get used to it. It's a performance truck. Why complain about the exhaust noise anyway, right? The only real drawback, even with a 33-gallon fuel tank, which is reasonably large enough, this motor sucks it dry pretty quick. So I plan on making lots of pit stops. Here's a good piece of advice. You can take lots of highway trips in this rig. Use the cruise control as much as you can because the speed you're going at is very deceptive. You think you're doing 70, 75, you look in the speedometer, you're doing 90, 95. Doesn't feel like it. Easy to fool yourself. Either that or keep your eye on the speedometer. Okay, we pulled over after doing 79 miles on the highway, and for what it's worth, I was clocking even 12 miles to the gallon. But doing a bit more passing than I planned, and hitting the throttle a bit more than I wanted. So it's dropped to 11.5. Others who've driven this type of truck tell me if you keep the cruise control to even 65 miles per hour, you can get a 14 MPG as claimed on the EPA window sticker, but really, if you can afford 100 grand for a truck, you're not going to waste your time driving that slow to save a few bucks in gas. In fact, I'm not even going to talk about fuel economy anymore on this video. I just did it so you know what it gets in the real world, and we're pretty much done with that. From now on, we're driving for fun, which is what this truck is all about anyway. If you're planning on driving a TRX, this is where you're going to be spending a lot of your time and spending a lot of your money. The gas station. They're getting to know me by my first name here. Before we do any four-wheeling, we got to stop by the ranch house and get supplies, and yeah, I know, I still haven't fixed the roof yet. Someday. The one thing I like about this TRX truck Instead of a turbocharger feeding off the exhaust with the wimpy put 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 sound, we get a belt-driven supercharger under the hood with the shrieky noise letting you know it's working. That's what I want to hear. I love superchargers. In the old days, it was called a real man setup. Uh, I guess nowadays we have to say real woman setup too. I love the way it sounds.
Nothing beats a supercharger. But they're too big to fit in small cars, so... Doggone it, the bar is closed. It looks like we've stumbled upon an old cemetery from the 1880s. In case you haven't noticed, we're going to start doing some off-roading. Nothing serious. They want this truck back in one piece. The tires on this rig have lots of traction. Really don't need to put it in the off-road 4x4 system. And you really don't need the locking rear axle. For most situations, that is. This is such a smooth truck. The corneability of this rig on dirt roads is fantastic. Just like a sports car on pavement. I'm not driving to the maximum because I'm trying to keep my eye on the road and the video camera, but trust me, if you really want to wind this sucker out, not too many vehicles that could catch you. And the way the suspension sucks up the ruts, whether it's in the automatic mode or Baja mode, is pretty impressive. Yeah, the vehicle bounces around a bit, but it's very, very smooth and quiet. When I was on active duty in the Middle East, I kind of enjoyed my Hummer, but I would gladly swap it for this. <laughs> Absolutely. What I really like about this truck, it almost drives itself. It's so comfortable to drive, and that plus the fact it hugs the road so we don't go off the edge in places like this. It's a long drop down there, no guardrails. Long drop. We're a couple of miles from Mexico. I should cross the border, go down and get some tequila and señoritas. Is that what you want to do? Oh, now you don't want to talk. No, what would you say? I, I, you always want to interrupt my video. Now when I ask you a question, you sit there dumb as a rock. Well, because right? I'm not... What do you mean? I don't want to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, I know he does all the stuff. What you ask? Never mind, never mind. You, yeah, you wouldn't know what to do with the senior read anyway. Well. <laughs> yeah. I was reading some factory literature telling me this thing's designed to do off roading up to 70, 80 miles per hour. Although they don't say what conditions, and you can jump two or three feet up in the air and land without damaging anything. Okay, and I'd like to do that for the video, but the problem is this is going to be used for a lot of PR people. If they get it back with scratches and dents, I'm going to have my hide nailed to the wall, so... There's always so much four-wheeling I can do for you. This is where I take my sports cars to evaluate the performance and cornering ability. And this thing corners like a champ. If the slow pokes will get out of my way. Okay, passing him wasn't a problem. That was 700 horsepower. Now we keep this vehicle planted on the road. Oh, what a fantastic truck. I don't think it was made to do this, but it's doing it. Hope I don't hit a mountain lion or a skunk. We're going uphill, by the way, and the massive amount of torque produced by this engine is fantastic. Pulls from low RPM, as you would expect with a supercharger. This is fun. I'm getting a Dodge Charger Hellcat in two weeks and a Durango Hellcat the week after that, so if you like my Hellcat videos, you might want to subscribe so you don't miss those. The only real disadvantage for off-roading you can see on this 
Ram TRX is excessive width. Makes it kind of hard to fit on trails around here that are usually narrow. But with a photo ground clearance, locking differentials, makes up for that. With this powerful engine, pretty unstoppable combination. Those are some big rocks we just crossed. All that rattling you hear, it's not the truck. I have a bunch of junk inside the cabin here. And frankly, I haven't heard any rattles on this ram since we've been driving it for a week. So, after a week of driving, what do I have to say about this Ram TRX? Well, number one, is it better than the Ford Raptor? Uh, yep. That's why you're paying more money. Number two, all you internet guys out there bitching about the high price tag, stop doing it. This isn't a Ram with a big engine just dropped in. Like the other Hellcat cars in the Chrysler line, this is a totally redesigned vehicle, not a Ram with a big engine. I don't know why someone in the marketing department called this a TRX. They should call it what it really is, a Ram Hellcat. If you think 90 grand is too much for an off-road vehicle, go to the Europeans and give them 90 grand and see what you get. Not much. To get this much horsepower off a European SUV, you'd be up to at least 140 grand. And the performance wouldn't be much better. And keep in mind, you knock 10 grand off the price by eliminating a lot of the fluffy option packages. If they could only find a way to boost the fuel economy up from 10 miles to the gallon to 50, huh, now they'd really have something. That'd be a 10 out of 10. And for all the people out there saying, well, I'd never buy a Chrysler product, certainly not a Ram, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but if we swap the keys, my vehicle for yours, I bet you'd do the trade in a heartbeat, wouldn't you? Overall, this is a fantastic truck. You'd afford the purchase price and the fuel upkeep. You will not be disappointed. Coming up, two more video tests we did. Get on the link, click and watch. And subscribe, I need to pay off my gas credit card. Especially after driving this.